Today my friends were making 9 trendy cocktail garnishes. Every time I make one of them, I get questions on how to make them. So today's the day and we're gonna start with how to make your pineapple fronds looking prettier than ever. So first you're gonna need some scissors and obviously some fronds, but you know they don't always look super fresh, they're crooked or brownish, but if you flip it around, look at that beautiful color gradient, this will always look super fresh. So using your scissors, you're gonna cut the bottom part to make it look like it's the upper part and remove the ugly tip. I really like this curly look, but you see it also works really nicely with regular scissors. So from now on, every time you're gonna make yourself some tiki cocktails, your pineapple fronds will always look super fresh. Next, we're gonna do the tiny cherry mint crown. This is one I got requests for a lot and it's actually super simple. What you're gonna need is cherries and mint, but not that whole bunch of mint. All you need is the tiniest tip of the mint sprig. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch the very tip of the sprig and remove two leaves under. That's gonna give you a little bit of extra stem to plant in the cherry. You're also gonna need one sharp knife, and this is optional but very useful, a small tweezer. Lastly, you're gonna need something round and metal to punch a hole in your eyes to create a nest for your cherry. This is a garlic crusher from IKEA and it's perfect with its round handles. I personally always use my eye stem, but literally anything in metal and round will do. Next, you want to grab a cherry and looking at it, you're going to identify where was the stem of it. You're going to flip it around and simply cut a little bit at the bottom part. That way, it's going to hold perfectly on a flat surface. Next, you're going to grab your little sprig and plug it directly into the hole of the cherry. Then you're simply gonna take your metal piece and press it a few seconds in the middle of your ice cube. This will make the perfect little nest for your garnish. So all you have to do is to take it, place it in there and make yourself a delicious cocktail. Now, when you're gonna strain your cocktail, make sure to pour it next to the ice cube rather than on top of it. Otherwise your garnish might want to run away. And that's it. That's how we make the tiny cherry mint crown. Next up, the cucumber roll, the funniest garnish you'll ever make. For this one, you're gonna need one large cucumber, a wide peeler, and one pair of large tweezers. Now, to start, you're gonna remove the first layer of the cucumber. This one, we're not gonna use it. Then you're gonna keep on making some long slices for as many garnishes as you want. I'm gonna make a few today because you will see it's pretty fun. Then when you reach the middle of the cucumber, usually it doesn't make nice slices, so I flip it around and restart from the other side. Now you're simply gonna hold your tweezers like this, grab a long slice of cucumber, pinch it with the tweezers, and now I'm gonna stop talking because you will see it's very straightforward. Bam, that's how we do it. Uh, let's make another one. And to release it, you simply pull and there you have it, a perfectly rolled slice of cucumber in not even a second. I really like this garnish with cocktails served over rice because I feel the roll will simply hold better at the surface of the glass like in this delicious Royal Refresher. Now let's move on to the Angostura stencil. To make this one, all you will need is some Angostura bitters and a stencil. You'll also want to place your Angostura in a spray bottle, so remove that little cap, pour your Angostura in your spray bottle, and don't forget to place that cap back, otherwise you'll be very mad at yourself next time you're gonna make an old fashioned. Let me know in the comments who've made that mistake before. Now, this garnish works only on sour cocktails, so go ahead and make yourself one. Then, placing your stencil over the drink, you're gonna spray a little bit of Angostura on top. It's gonna smell awesome and looks great, all we want for a sour. Now we're gonna make what's quickly becoming my favorite citrus zest. So to make this, obviously you're gonna need a citrus, a white peeler or a knife and something to cut some round shapes. I'm using the tips of a piping bag. It comes in different sizes and I love them. If you're using a knife, you're gonna swivel the arch 360 degrees until you reach the beginning of your cut. This will give you an already pretty decent round shape, but using the tip of your piping bag is gonna get even better. Look at this, a perfect round arch zest. I simply love it. 
If you prefer using the wide peeler, it also works perfectly. I simply recommend you use some cutters that are slightly smaller. I personally really like to use the very small one to make some small duds like this. What's very important to keep in mind though is whenever you use that technique, express your zest before cutting it in a round shape. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time to express enough oil for your cocktail. So this is how it looks with one large disc and this is how it looks with three small dots. I personally like them both, but I'm curious, which one do you like best? The large disc or the small dots? Let me know in the comments below. Now you've probably noticed, but foam garnishes are everywhere and this is the easiest way to do it. You're gonna need the ISI canister and NO2 cartridge. I think this works even better when the canister is cold, so you're gonna place it in the fridge at least 20 minutes before making the foam. I'm gonna make a maple one today, so you're gonna need maple syrup and one egg white. The recipe is super simple, one part of maple for three parts of water. So that's one and a half ounces of maple syrup for four and a half ounces of water. Then you're gonna add one egg white to the canister, close the lid and add one NO2 cartridge. A lot of people say that two cartridges are necessary, but with that size of a canister, 500 ml, one is plenty enough. Once you've injected the gas, give it a good shake for about 30 seconds. At this point, it's ready to use, but I personally like to keep it in the fridge a little bit before using it. And don't forget to rinse the spout every time after you use it. Then you can make yourself a delicious cocktail, pour it in a cocktail coupe, and simply garnish this with your amazing foam. This drink is a maple peach bourbon sour. It's exquisite with the foam. The recipe is gonna be in the show notes. Now it's time for one of my favorite garnish, the Magic Dust. For this one, you're gonna need something powdered. To that music, match it for the beautiful color contrast. You're also gonna need something to dust the powder. I like to use a tea infuser with squeezed handles, but you can also use the good old powder duster. You're also gonna need an atomizer bottle filled up with something sticky. I like to use simple syrup diluted with water, so that would be two parts of water for one part of sugar. Now in terms of glassware, something etched like this will not work so well. I highly recommend you use something sleek like this beautiful glass. Then you're simply gonna spray a little bit of syrup on the outside of the glass, dust some powder, tap on the glass to remove the extra, and then you're ready to make your cocktail. If you're making a sour like I am today, I always like to add a little more powder at the surface of the cocktail. And there you have it, my friends, the magic dust. Isn't it pretty? I love it. Now it's time for the burnt wedge. This one is super straightforward. All you will need is one citrus, do that using a grapefruit, and one torch. So all you have to do really with this one is just to cut a citrus wedge, making sure not to keep any white pith in the middle. It's simply gonna look better that way. Then you're gonna place your wedge on a surface you're not afraid to burn, and using your torch, you're gonna slowly burn both sides of the wedge. It's gonna look great and the smell is awesome as well. Now all you have to do is to make yourself a cocktail, place the garnish on top of it and enjoy the show. Last but not least, let's make the oil drops. This one I made it a couple of times on the channel and it's always a hit. I also like to point out that it's super fun to play with different types of oils. Here I'm adding cilantro and chili oil, so all I'm gonna do is make myself a delicious daiquiri and add a few drops of cilantro and chili oil at the surface for a beautiful look, aroma, and taste. If you wanna know how to make oil with fresh herbs, simply click on my Daiquiri 2 Ways video. It's a mint oil, but you can use the same technique for any type of fresh herbs. So my friends, this is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching and see you very soon. Cheers.